Hi everyone, hi everyone, welcome to The Construct, welcome to yet another episode. My name is Upili Legon Pemba and this is your channel for your typical SMME who's trying to navigate themselves around the construction market. So welcome here. If you're new, please subscribe, please, please, we're getting to a thousand. Um, if you are coming back, you know what to do, let's move. But more than anything, now what I want to do with my, with my videos is I want it to be content that is actually really in real time so what i did was i'm going to start a new segment called construction interchange where i'll basically just be talking to people from the industry and just um for us to understand because you know like sometimes especially because you guys come here to this channel and it's mainly my view so i've started a new segment called construction interchange it's basically an interchange of minds an interchange of just ideas knowledge and perspectives so every week i'm going to be getting like a really cool guest to come on and for us to kind of bat out a couple of industry issues not not industry issues but like just things that affect us within the industry and obviously i'll be getting your engineers like contractors so different sectors and different spheres and different levels of the industry just to kind of get a, a broader perspective and for this to be a construction channel i don't want it to be opinion oh, things this and that's just the notion that you should go for so that's why i want to expose my audience to not just my views but also there could be contradicting views from from my guests and i'm really going to be getting people that are like moving differently in the in the industry like they're not doing you know like the straight and narrow and they are they have like a, a really different way that they've tackled the industry so i'm going to be bringing you um construction interchange i think probably every two weeks so at least you know that a month you get three three videos from me so we're going to move along uh, a bit quicker when when i start construction interchange Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well. I'm going to be putting out a couple of nice things in terms of just construction um, content from that side. So please make sure to follow me there. My gosh, my eyes. My eyes are, yeah. I'm, y'all, guys, please excuse me. Like the flu is, is, is hitting me badly. But I'm here and I'm doing this video. So yeah, so... Um, supplier versus contractor. So, Pilile, when I get into, like, I want to do construction and obviously I've done construction management or I've done this, I've done that in terms of just, um, like qualifications within the industry, even those that don't. And this is like the most asked question. Should I go into it as a supplier or should I go into it as a contractor? How, how is it that, and what are the pros and cons? Okay, cool. This video today is about that. So let's start it off like with a simple definition of what a supplier versus what a contractor is for the, 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 the guy at the back. So a supplier is organizations that are contracted to supply physical goods, physical materials um, to site, to a contractor, to a client. Um, so basically you are supplying a, a, a plant, material or any type of goods to your client. Okay, so that's a supplier. And when it comes to contractor, it means organizations that are appointed by a client to carry out the construction works. In as much as sometimes there's so it's those terms are so interchangeable in terms of sometimes the contractor, like in some definitions, sometimes the contractor being the supplier of the construction works. But yeah, just to keep it kind of just very basic, supplier would be um, you moving um, uh, goods from point A to point B. Um, obviously, you're not manufacturing them yet as you are just a supplier. Sometimes you've got a manufacturer and a supplier. You are just supplying uh, right now. So basically, what you are is the middleman. You take goods from this side and you kind of, um, you take them to this side. Okay, uh, we, are, we, are, we are still defining. I'll give you the pros and cons of that. And I'll make it a classic example of a building. So um, we are going into, we are building this building. You are contracted to build a builder, to, to build a builder. <laughs> you are contracted to build this building, okay? So you are the contractor. But obviously, there are certain segments to being a contractor. You get main contractor and your subcontractor. So, and obviously, like, contractors in between. So most of the time, the main contractor will be the one that is housing the actual contract. So other contractors will come on to the one big project. So you you could be just the main contractor or one of the specialists are, that are within that project. That is the contractual um, contractor side in terms of just the definitions. 
Okay, cool. So as you are going into the market, okay, I'm not going to go back into just the documents of, of what, um, if you are going into it as a supplier or if you're going into it as a contractor, I've got a video for that. Um, if you are wanting to go like deeper in terms of just the documents that you need, I do have a video for that. So you can, you can just, um, watch that video in terms of just documentation. Um, the contractor side needs you to be on a certain CIDB level, um, which is your competence and your financial position. So it's not just as admin based as supply is. So is supply is more admin based and contracting is more skills based. So in order for them to kind of trust you that you can build a 50 million um, building, you have to show um, the works that you've done. You know, so that's basically the difference. So, so as the, the general contractor, the one that's housing the project, you will kind of uh, be the one that um, is responsible for your trade contractors. You know, like people, when it comes, obviously I'll touch on that later in terms of finding your niche within contracting. But obviously you'll have the main guy who then says, I'm not going to do all of this. Some of them do. It depends on like how big of a project it is. Like, so if the bigger the project, the more contractors that will, that, that will come on and the more it, it will take a little bit more stakeholders um, to to kind of get it running let me get to the very important the very important um, detail which is um, starting capital so the one thing when 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 it comes to the contracting side is that you can't start without skill and experience so in terms of just what you are putting in for for the contractual side it's more skills based and from um, a a supply side it's more do I have the capital to buy this type of stock, keep it on hand in order to be able to resell it and create kind of a, a better value chain for myself? And, you know, so it also it also depends with the supply side. It's more capital based. And with the contractual side, not that the contractual side is not capital based. It is. Trust me a lot. But I, I mean, in terms of when you are thinking about it and you are thinking, OK, cool. So how is it that I can go into it? You can start from a supply side. Um, without necessarily having the skills to supply a certain product. It's just a matter of you kind of understanding it and understanding the metrics of it in order for you to be able to relay the information and price it um, properly. And with the contractual side is you can't be contracted to do something that you have never done before or you don't have the experience in or you haven't proved a track record of you actually doing it before. So you need to, to think about that. So if you are, this is what I always say, I don't like this notion of, of people thinking the only time that you're a contractor is when you are just um, uh, you are just in business with the government through tendering. Umusebe's resign that is being a contractor. And if you are willing to build it, um, to uh, uh, build it and understand the way of starting it and understand the way of monetizing your skill and your God-given talent, it actually could turn around to be a really profitable business. So with the contractual side, I say, more hands-on based skill experience and with the supply side it's capital strategy of, of course we need strategy on this side but capital strategy and um, distribution value chain uh, logistics so that's you know just understand the difference between the both so when it comes to obviously when you are putting in money and you are saying okay cool I'm starting it now how much do I actually need it's project based right with supply how you go into it I want to do a video of, of how to raise capital when it comes to construction, but I don't want to do it yet. I want, there's something that I'm waiting for, for me to be able to guide, to give you guys a solid structure of, because like you get your NYDA and, and yes, like your other youth programs, but in terms of like, you know, like be, being able to create a revenue stream for yourself that will create um, a platform for you to get more projects. That's what I want. That's that's where I'm going. So look out for that video. It's something that's going to be coming. But in terms of now, like if I were to to advise you as a Pilili, I'd say um, if you're working right now and you want to start in supply, get a loan, dude. Get a personal loan. Like um, that's that's how we all do it. Like you just you take that chance while you're still working, um, and you take you take that loan that will that will give you at least you know that that first. Ah, you know, I'm I'm taking it and putting it there, and then I will get that um that that twenty thirty grand and that twenty thirty grand like I'm just using obviously um these amounts, but that twenty thirty grand then will I'll be able to buy this and then I'll make another ten grand there and you know so at least enough. So that's why it would be great for you to to start it while you're working. But if you are not, I say 
um, if you are not working, obviously now I'm talking about if you don't have the cash really, readily available. What you also can do is when you are starting out, when you don't have that initial that initial capital, um, there's something called being an agent. So if you're going to work hard on your projects and whatever niche that you go into, create relationships around that product to a point where you are able to 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 get. So let's say you get the project, get the project from your client and then kind of um, become the agent of actually getting it from getting those clients to buying the material and then come a, kind of giving you a commission on it. So now you're not necessarily buying the product um, from the manufacturer, but you have kind of facilitated a sale. So if, if, if you are willing to go that route and willing to, to, to do it like that, it's also an avenue um, because then you don't need um, capital to start it off. And obviously, as you build the capital, then you know that, okay, cool, I will get the capital to buy this or keep stock on hand or buy it just to kind of resell it and get the money and then buy some more until I can keep. Um, so that's the supply side. The contractor side, it depends on your CIDB grade. Um, your CIDB, um, grade. So obviously it depends on your financial capability. Can you, can, do you have the financial capability to be housing a project like this? Um, and obviously um, that's, that's how you grow with your experience. So um, they, they are not just going to give you, a, 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 they're just not award a contract uh, worth 50 million to someone who hasn't even done a project that's worth a million. So obviously you'd have to start from your, your, your V drains and you know, like the, 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 the small ones and kind of prove the business acumen and project management skills to house um, that big of a project. So obviously, you, you, you start from the beginning. The nice thing about the, the, the contractor side is that with the small ones, you don't really have to have the capital. It's just a matter of um, not really have to have the capital because you do in order to get those materi materials. So let's say they've contracted you, uh, contracted you, it's your first one, they've contracted you to build um, eight gabions. So you'd have to be able to buy those eight gabions, kind of be able to level it out, buy the filter fabric for behind it, buy the stones. And that project is done and then you kind of build on it like that. So you are not just going to go into the contractual side and get a 50 million, uh, million project. Don't worry about that. So the ones that you are going to be starting off with, um, those are the, the smaller ones, which you'd have to have um, that, that, that disposable income for. And then you kind of grow into it. And obviously, as you do the bigger projects, you'll be able to, to manage your money a bit better. Also, there are sessions that you get, um, I don't know if they, they probably do, there, there are sessions that you get from the municipality that kind of, it's like an agreement um, from, from, the, from the municipality and um, where you're gonna be buying the product, where they basically say, this person is doing this job for this municipality, so you can kind of give them this, um, this material on credit based on the fact that we are serving as guarantee on the fact that you will be paid back your money. Or sometimes they will pay the contractor um, directly, or sometimes they will pay um, the the material supplier uh, directly so it also depends on how you do it so there are different ways to move um, with the different um, with the different sides when it comes to getting started and how to to kind of get your 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 first one and how to navigate that financial issue so yes so we've discussed pricing we've discussed relationships we have discussed just how you navigate what type of person you are your skill set your financial cap uh, capability navigating yourself around the financial hurdle as a as a startup you will not get like any of these things are not possible if you are not getting the correct information let's start there so if you are going to go into it you are spending your money um, you are putting yourself on the chopping block for a lot of money and um, you don't want to be risking things along the way. So you want to make sure that if you are going to go and take out that loan um, to start your, your first project, if you are going to be using your, your, your savings in order to kind of launch yourself into public procurement, private, um, it's also very important that you understand that the information that you're getting is very reliable. And that's another thing that I want to go into. The quicker the information, the quicker that you can move. And that's the thing, like between being a contractor and being and, and, and being a supplier, the value of time when it comes to 
being successful in either being a contractor or being uh, a supplier. You have to be getting onto those projects. You have to be one of the first people that are coming in. You have to know the project, what is happening. You have to have the notifications of each product, a project, what is happening um, and, and, and who to contact. You need that information and a lot of people don't want to share that information with you. That's the one thing that I will tell you for free because a lot of people won't share information of, nobody will share their contact list with you. No one will tell you that, oh, you know what? You're my competitor. So there's a project there and you need to contact that person in order to be able to price them. Or there's a development that's going to be starting there and they are currently putting out, um, they are putting out notices for contractors to kind of bid, the, the, for, bid for those projects. They're not going to give you that. So you always need to make sure. And obviously, as a newbie and working yourself, uh, working yourself within the market, you're not going to know everybody everywhere. And you're not going to be that random person that is constantly saying, the loser means, you know, um, when you don't know what is actually happening. Going into sites, going into those meetings, going into um, getting those people, you have to understand, you need to know what is happening. You need to understand what is happening around the project. What is the project deadline? What is know your business? And in order for that to happen, you have to have substantial leads. And that's the, that, and that's the crappy thing. The one thing that I've realized that has, has helped me a lot was because when I left the industry that I was in, a lot of people don't want to share. And that's, and, that's just the, and that's just the life that we live. But there's, and I've said it before in the, in, in the other videos, there's leads to business, guys. Leads to business will basically give you first dibs. On all of your projects, are giving you the correct information, who to contact, and, and the progress of the project as it goes along. So you don't have to be in as much as let's say you're starting out, right? You are. You don't have time to be going onto sites and and oh no, I need to speak to this project manager here, or I need to speak to 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 that contractor there. And most of the time, you don't know who is who anyway. So if you have something that one, you are getting instant not notifications on. How are you moving within that project? Is a project from inception stage. Like sometimes you know that you are supplying, you are supplying materials that are in the beginning. So you know that, you know, when they give you those, those time frames. okay, this is, this is what is happening, this is what is happening. So if you know that you are the foundation, you know that you have to be going in there now, the people are starting to have those conversations about kind of foundation materials, or if that project that, or oh, that development that you've been gunning for to, to try and say, you know what, I want to contact this person, I want to be your sabi, you're getting all that information. You know exactly who to contact, you know exactly um, and, and, and what is happening at the time. So when you are kind of doing those proposals, you, you, you are coming from an informed place and you are not just getting there and you are not just a newbie and I'm starting out and I don't know what's happening, you know. So, um, I've, I've been using it like from the time that I was working till now and I understand its value now even more as an entrepreneur because I don't have time to be chasing up on people. Some, some people don't understand information. You get to people and, and you, you phone certain municipalities or certain contractors or clients and they speak to you like they don't, they, like, like you're just, you're bothering them. So if you have the information and already when you're coming into those calls, you know exactly what you're talking about and you're doing those follow-ups in a correct manner because you know what is happening and you know who to contact, you know the touch points, it puts you in a better position to be able to streamline that process and to be able to kind of navigate yourself a bit better. So the next thing that you need to consider in terms of um, which side you want to kind of go into, it's also the, 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 the market and the market itself. Like in terms of, you know how sometimes, you know when you're buying houses, sometimes they say it's a seller's market and sometimes they say it's the buyer's market. The strength of buyers. So if it's a market for buyers, um, there's there's too many of that, pro uh, of that product. So buyers have more of an option or a choice or is um, that a niche product that is um, that is you can get it only at one place and it's kind of monopolized so um, you have kind of the pricing power so it also it, it also depends on on the market and, and and how is it and how you can navigate it and which part are you good at the one thing that I can say from that side is relationships 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 are key in, in construction as a market you have to have your guy um, on the contractor side is have your tradesman, have your trades contractor, 
have a guy have a guy for everything so when you are bringing your project together you are being you are bringing in a team of solid people who are going to get your product uh, your project to a point where it's seamless um you, you're going to get it from suppliers that are going to get your product on time um the right product um people that are going to are going to move around your timelines because you guys have established those relationships when you're in a jam because everybody's always in a jam in this industry so when you're in a jam you know that you've got a solid team of people from the buying side from the contractual side from the trades you know like from the structure i'm um, from structural so you have a solid team of people around you so if nothing else that's the one that's that's the last thing that, that i would leave you on on know where you're going know what to do know your avenues and know your strategy you know so when you are informed and you're coming from an informed place you know how to strategize um better so if you want to dive a bit deeper because if i go deeper than this trust me it's going to be another 30 minute video and i don't want that so if you want to be deeper um book a consult and we'll kind of tackle it there on okay cool this is what you've chosen and how you're going to navigate that and how is it that you can kind of um get better at it don't forget again to tune into construction interchange on my instagram and maybe i'll put it on here or I'll, I'll see i'll see but um let's 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 go on my instagram let's follow there let's put in the questions there and let me and my guests from the industry better insight in terms of just how to get how to get into an industry that you have different outlooks on so thank you for coming on again my name is Opili Legon Impemba and thank you for coming on to the channel and I hope that you stay bye